Welcome to the eClass orientation video for new students. Whether you are new to accelerated, hybrid, or online learning, or if you are a seasoned veteran of this learning environment, we will be sure to make you as prepared as possible to enter your coursework. My name is Kayla and I'm the project coordinator for the Office of Online Learning at Mount St. Mary College. In my office, we are responsible for making sure our learning management system eClass is working behind the scenes for faculty and students so that they can have a navigable, flexible, and easy to use learning environment to work from. We also make sure to provide all of the necessary training for faculty and students who are using the learning management system. And lastly, we participate in many consortiums and work with partners in the field of online learning to constantly be learning the best practices of our field and often offer workshops on many blended and online learning topics for our college community. Before we get started, let's cover an overview of what to expect from this orientation video. First, we will illustrate to students the expectations and requirements when taking online and hybrid courses. Second, we will introduce students to MSMC's Learning Management System eClass and demonstrate the most commonly used resources and activities that faculty use. And lastly, we will outline a few important things to expect from online coursework and offer tips for success for learning online. Let's get started. We will begin by covering some recommended technology. This list of items will help you begin your coursework with ease and with the least amount of technology hiccups as possible. First, make sure your system and software is up to date. Make sure you have a word processing and presentation software, such as a recent copy of Microsoft Office. Make sure you have an updated version of Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome Internet browsers. These are the most compatible browsers with eClass. Also be sure to have some form of virus protection. And note that some software may be required outside of this list. For example, a PDF reader, Adobe Flash, Windows Media Player, and so on. Please note that Apple mobile devices, such as iPhones or iPads, may have difficulty viewing flash files. Have a backup ready, like a PC or a laptop, just in case. Now, let's cover how to get to eClass and other important links to know as students. The MSMC portal is the gateway to important links and information for the college community. Two important links to know are the eClass link and the student Google Mail link, conveniently located on the banner of the portal homepage. It is important to note that your professors will only have access to your student email address that is issued to you by Mount St. Mary College. As such, it is important to check this email daily to make sure you are not missing any important communications from your professors or other campus offices. Now let's get to eClass. eClass is our learning management system used to host any online course content. It can be used to conduct a course in its entirety or simply for students to access important course resources. The brand name of the learning management system is Moodle. However, MSMC has branded our version of Moodle to be called eClass. The terms are used interchangeably when referring to the LMS. First you will notice a link to your name and picture on the top right corner of your screen. If you click on it, a number of items will appear in a drop-down menu, including the dashboard, your profile, grades, messages, and preferences. Let's click on Profile. To edit your profile, click Edit Profile under User Details. You will notice the option to add a description of yourself and a picture. You will also notice a number of links located under the slider images of the home page. The first is a link to the Getting Started area of eClass. This includes self-paced tutorials on eClass topics. The second is a link to the MSMC community. These are community pages and committee pages that faculty and students will create and manage independently. You will also see a link to the Need Help area. This is where you will go to find information on eClass support as well as view certain tutorials and resources and frequently asked questions. If you keep scrolling, you'll see a link to your courses. Any live courses will appear here automatically. This is updated for you semester by semester. You are also able to access your courses via your dashboard. Now let's review the three most common activities that your faculty members may assign you in eClass. 
We'll begin with the assignment activity. The assignment activity allows you to upload documents digitally to your professor. It is safer than using email because things tend to get lost in cyberspace with email. With an assignment Dropbox, it is good for both the faculty and the student. The student will get confirmation that their assignment has been successfully submitted and the faculty members don't have to print anything out. An assignment is always indicated by the hand icon holding a paper. Upon opening assignment, typically you will see directions. In this example, the professor wants you to watch a short video and submit a two-page write-up explaining your stance on the issue. Underneath, you'll see submission status. This includes important information, such as whether or not you've even attempted the assignment. You will also see your grading status. This will change if your faculty member has chosen to add a grade. You will also see the due date, the time remaining, and you will also be able to add any submission comments you would like. To upload your assignment, click Add Submission. You will now see a file submission area appear. Click the paper with the add button to search for your computer files to find the file you'd like to upload. We'll use this as an example. Click upload this file and you will now see that your file has appeared. However, be sure to click save changes. Without clicking this button, your submission won't be effective. Once you click save changes, you'll notice you'll be brought back to the Assignment Dropbox homepage. Now you can see that your submission status has been changed to submitted for grading. You'll also be able to see the file that you uploaded and if your professor allows, the ability to edit that submission. The next activity we will cover is a discussion forum. A discussion forum allows for students and faculty to communicate back and forth asynchronously about a topic. A discussion forum is noted by the blue and green bubble icon. In the discussion forum, typically your professors will provide a detailed overview of what they expect. This professor has asked them to answer four questions. To add your discussion topic, click Add a new discussion topic. The page will reload with the option to submit your topic. First, add a subject, and then add some body. You are also able to attach files. If you needed to, you could search through your computer files to find a resource that you would like to include as part of your post. If you choose to follow this forum, you can click Discussion Subscription. This means that you will be forwarded emails every time somebody responds to your discussion topic. When you are ready, click Post to Forum. You will receive a message that will remind you that you have 30 minutes to edit if you want to make any changes. And the page will reload with your topic as a discussion. Now any fellow students who may add discussions after you will land on top of your post. To see what your post contained, click the title of the discussion. You will see the body of the post and have the option to reply. The last activity example I'll show you is the quiz activity. Faculty are able to create online quizzes and exams using eClass. Typically, they'll create them for low stakes exams, but don't be surprised if you see one for high stakes. The quiz activity is noted by the paper with the red check mark. Upon clicking on a quiz, you will usually have some instructions to read first. In this example, the instructor has chosen to let you know that this is a multiple choice examination of 10 questions. It also lets you know how many points each question is worth and how long you have to complete it. Underneath the directions is some very useful information. You will be able to see how many attempts you are allowed at the quiz. You'll be able to see when the quiz will open and become available to you, and when it will close and you will no longer have access to it. You will also see the time limit that the professor has set up and the grading method that they're going to use for all of your attempts. In this example, the professor is choosing to take the highest grade out of two attempts, but if they want to take the average, they're able to do that too. When you are ready to begin the quiz, click Attempt Quiz Now. You will see a confirmation asking you if you're really ready to start. Click Start Attempt when you are ready. This will bring you to the quiz page. Let's take a look at the quiz navigation area. The quiz navigation area contains a lot of useful information for the students. 
For example, any of the questions that are marked with a black box around it indicates that those are the number of questions on the current page. You are also able to see the amount of time you have left in the countdown clock. Go through the quiz and select your answers. You may notice that your professors are able to add audio and images to any quiz question. Sometimes they'll just be text. Keep in mind that your questions may be separated by pages. If you have more than one page of questions, click Next to be brought to the next page. Continue to answer the questions of the quiz. And click Next again. The summary of a temp page will appear when all of the questions have been answered. You will know if you have an answer to question because it will tell you that it has been unanswered. If it says answer saved, rest assured that your answer has been recorded and you are ready to submit your quiz. You are able to return to the attempt by clicking the return to attempt button. You are also able to jump back to a number of a question by using the quiz navigation block. When you are ready to submit your quiz, click submit all and finish. You will once again receive a confirmation that you are ready to submit your quiz. Click Submit All and Finish Again. If your faculty member has allowed it, you may be brought to the Quiz Overview page. This will allow you to see any questions that you got right or wrong and may even show you the correct answer. Now that we have covered eClass, let's move on to some tips for success when learning online. First, I'd like to cover time management. One of the most common misconceptions of online learning is that it's easier than traditional face-to-face -face learning. Unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that that's just not true. Online courses have the same academic requirements as traditional classroom delivered courses, but are often more challenging because of life, work, and school schedule challenges and the sometimes unfamiliar learning environment. It is important to be organized and structured when it comes to your coursework. Use an app on your phone to remind you when things are due, or use the old-fashioned pen and paper to record things down. Another misconception of online learning is that you won't really have to interact with your peers and your instructor as much as you would in a face-to-face -face learning environment. That just isn't true. In fact, you may possibly be interacting with them more through those discussion forums specifically. Some other things you should know is that typically there is no scheduled class time for a fully online course. This may not be true for hybrid courses. Best practice is to participate in your course at least five days out of the week at minimum. Breaks are important, but do not take long breaks from your coursework. Familiarize yourself with the course syllabus and course calendar very early on. Those will be your best friends as you're planning out the next 8 to 12 weeks of your life. From there, consider your family work schedule and set an established school schedule that works for you. Dedicate a quiet space for you to do your work, even if that means going to your local library or coffee shop, or even coming to the mount. Stick to whatever schedule you set as best as you can, because routine is key. Now, let's cover how to get support in case you need it. Two offices on campus are prepared to support you with your online learning and technology needs during your coursework. They are the Office of Online Learning and the IT Support Center. The Office of Online Learning is responsible for eClass training, eClass technical support, and online student success. If you need any support with your eClass, please email onlinelearning at msmc.edu. You may also enter a ticket using the MSMC Help Desk. The Help Desk can be accessed at helpdesk.msmc.edu. Select Online Learning eClass and we will be sure to get back to you the next business day. You may also call our office number during business hours. Our office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. during the regular semester. The IT Support Center is responsible for more broad technology topics. This includes mount account support, computer technology support and training, Wi-Fi and connectivity when on campus, printing when on campus, and support with your mobile devices. To get support with IT, email it.support at msmc.edu. You may also enter a ticket for support at the Help Desk. Be sure to select the IT Support Center when you are entering your request. You can call their office number to receive support, or you can stop in at the IT Support Center in Aquinas Room 13. 
What's most important to remember is that communication is the key to success. If you're experiencing any problems or have questions of any kind, there are many support systems put in place for you to find help. First and foremost, ask your instructor. If you're having a problem with eClass, likely they'll know the answer. And if they don't, they'll know how to get in contact with us. Second is your advisor. They're prepared to help you navigate your online learning experience. And lastly, the online learning support team. If you ever need any assistance with eClass, feel free to contact us.